The port of Dover on the southeast coast of England is just 21 miles from Calais in France, the gateway into Europe. Over 6,000 lorries cross the English Channel every day, and with 18 million passengers making the journey each year, it's the busiest stretch of water in the world. But not all of the passengers crossing the Channel are welcome. Round the clock, the UK border agency has a presence at the port of Calais in France. Good boy. Up here, mate, up here. Good boy, in this one. See. With the aid of sniffer dogs, officers operate in force to protect the UK borders from clandestines, immigrants who attempt to enter the UK illegally. Dog is trained, trained to search for human scent. Um, so the primary, a primary role at, at uh, northern ports of France is to search for uh, illegal immigrants who smuggle themselves in lorries uh, and you know other other vehicles in order to get to the UK. Um, and the dog is is uh, body detection dog is one of the best um, technologies that we have. In the past 12 months, officers searched more than one million freight vehicles and found over 29,000 immigrants attempting to come into the UK. Tonight, sniffer dog Fergus and officer Matt are searching a lorry bound for Dover. Fergus is starting to show signs he can smell human presence. Is this an indication? Is kind of. It's more of a disturbance indication, which means either the driver or one of our staff has checked the vehicle and there's some form of human scent still around there. Waits. Which one did I find? This time, nobody is found. Really? It wasn't an overly strong indication, um, but it was worth a look. Officer Alex has continued the search of freight vehicles yep. using sniffer dog wax. And it doesn't take long before wax makes one of his trademark indications. We're going to get the camera in here because he's indicating. Wax's highly sensitive nose appears to have made a positive indication for human presence just above the lorry's wheel arches. At Gatwick Airport, a flight has just arrived from Portugal. Officers are monitoring passengers disembarking the flight and looking out for any signs of suspicious behavior. Thank you. One lone male passenger is of particular interest, as it's been noticed from his luggage tags that he started his journey outside of the EU. As far as I'm aware, he's a gentleman that's come up from um, Venezuela via Portugal. He's just been away for a week. I think he's got a, a sort of last minute ticket, I only booked the day before. The man says he's a minister who also works and raises funds for an American charity with a base in Venezuela. They've got projects and they need funding and things like that, you know. So he's a professional bike rider. His short visit to South America causes concern, with Venezuela known as a country with links to the international drugs trade. So when are you next going to be in contact with these people? A couple of hours. I've already spoken to them on the phone. OK. As Officer Tori continues to search the man's possessions, her colleague Gary comes across to swap test his suitcase for any traces of Class A drugs. Gary's face says it all. The swab shows a positive reading for cocaine. That's gone right to sign. There might be some form of traces of coke. He relays the information to Tory. Well, well, I've got tin. There was a positive hit from there. Yeah, there was a search at practice actually. Just wait there. I'm just going to x ray this one. Gary says that he's got a slight hit of coke, so I think a rub down might. That's the x-ray of the suitcase is clear, but with traces for cocaine, Tori wants to take her investigation to the next level. I want to start putting things in there. I'm just going to go and speak to my boss. I'll be back in a second. He's got no work ID on him at all. He's got a bit of a, an earmarked Bible, but other than that... So I'd find it weird if you were registered, like, working for a registered charity, you wouldn't have any sort of charitable ID if you'd been on a it charity trip. he's got trip. tons of stuff on his um, laptop. The news is broken to the passenger. When we were 
were doing a, I was doing the baggage search earlier. One of my colleagues, you, you may have saw him rub yeah. a small piece of, that's what we call an iron track machine. And it's given us um, a small trace or a small hit of, of um, cocaine from the inside of your bag. So I've spoken to my boss and she's authorised like a security search. It's just like a, a rub down, like a pat down. Okay, so if you can follow me, please. The man is led away to find out if he's hiding any packages. Back in Calais, Officer Alex and Sniffer Dog Wax have found something of interest within the wheel arches of a lorry bound for the UK. Wax indicates to Alex to investigate further. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Yeah, we've got at least one uh, clandestine on top of the pannier. So you've got a, a box that holds pallets, wooden pallets, uh, for loading. Um, and there's a gap in between the top of the, the metal box that holds the pallets and, and the actual trailer itself. Uh, so they're just, just laying on top, of the, on top of the pannier. Good boy. And what I'll do now is I'll get the dog out of the way and the guys can take a look. Alex is delighted with Wax's find. The driver of the lorry, less so. OK, driver, you stay there. OK, you, yeah. For every clandestine found in his lorry, the driver and his company face a fine of up to £2,000. Come on, there you come. Come on. One, two, three. Count four pairs of shoes here. Okay. Right, we, we've called um, for Hello. assistance from the office uh, and we'll have someone come down to help us get them off the vehicle and we'll keep them contained um, until the French police come down. Five people are eventually found hiding underneath the lorry. It's a significant find, but for Wax, it's all a big game. Dog's happy, he's got his tennis ball, which is. Uh, what he does it for. The clandestines are lined up as they wait for the French authorities to come and process them. For some of them, this was their third attempt at getting into the UK. The French police have taken them away um, to, to the station in, in the port here. Uh, they will process them and then they'll, they'll possibly interview them to ascertain whether they can be removed from France back to their country of origin. It's been another successful night all round, due in no small part to Sniffer Dog Wax. In Gatwick, the British minister whose suitcase has given a positive swab reading for cocaine has been taken for a body rubdown. When he's saying that uh, the charity he works for have paid for his trip, but he didn't like it there really. It's very vague about what he's actually doing, it's just charity work. What? No drugs are found on his body, so his shoes are taken away for further swab tests. And with another positive reading for cocaine, the plot thickens. There's basically a few inconsistencies with what's happened here, and that is the fact that he's obviously, he said he's a charity worker, he's worked for a charity for a long time, but he has no actual charity ID. Also, he said he had a lot of stuff on the computer which was related to the charity, but he now can't find it. The man who bought his ticket, he had said, was arranged by the charity. We now discover that the man who bought the ticket is his friend who's meeting him outside. It's nothing to do with the charity at all. With all of this in mind, officers decide to put the passenger through an X-ray. The positive drug hit from his shoes may suggest he's smuggling packages inside his body. However, his calm demeanor and full cooperation belies that of a drug smuggler. Passengers who've swallowed drugs will be arrested and detained for their own safety until all the packages safely come out. If you just follow the officer again, you can take your bits there. This time, however, it looks like the man has not swallowed any drugs. I think this is all a bit too dense. This is hip bone, isn't it? That's your new hip replacement. Oh, that yeah. is, yeah. yeah. But I mean, all this. With the last roll of the dice, Officer Kerry sends a team outside the airport to try and locate the person waiting to collect the passenger. Yeah, we've sent two officers out to look for the guy that is supposed to be meeting Mr Kerry, but as yet, no one has showed themselves. They've not turned up to a, a call for his name or even the, the call for the, the, the meter's name. So we, we've just been giving it a couple of minutes. If we hear nothing from it, I think at this stage, because of what we have, or rather what we don't have, we're probably going to have to 
we're going to have to let him go and, and just always be wandering, perhaps. Just down the end there. Thanks for your time. Thank you. No one is found outside the airport. After a thorough search, the man is free to go. The hits for drugs are put down to contamination. At Gatwick Airport, passengers have just arrived from Kingston in Jamaica. The UK border agency has just been alerted to a medical emergency on board the flight, and Officer Chris is sent to investigate. We're just rushing up to gate 59 now. We've received a call from the inbound Kingston flight that the lady on the flight has uh, been vomiting and has collapsed. I've already spoken to the crew. Um, she's traveling with three children and she said she's been vomiting the whole flight. So they said they were going to call the paramedics and she told the crew she was very worried um, because she'd been given something to swallow to bring back to the UK. With a suspected drug swallower on their hands, paramedics are dispatched to the aircraft along with border agency officers who process the woman's arrival. Depending on the woman's condition, she may go straight to hospital. If that's the case, officers will go with her in the ambulance. If not, she'll be processed here locally by Garrett Star. Are we taking the kids? Is the kids? Yep. Yeah. 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 We've got the passports, we'll look after the passports, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll go with them. As the sick woman is attended to by paramedics, provisions are made for her children. Children have just been taken through the controls, through passport controls and classes controls, and they'll be reunited or united with their grandmother. Um, the lady, the mother, she'll surely be taken to East Surrey Hospital, um, along with two detection officers as well, and they'll stay with her for the time being. The woman's health continues to deteriorate. So paramedics must rush her to hospital to assess whether or not she has packages inside her. If she has swallowed drugs, one burst package would take just minutes to cause almost certain death. The lady's just been loaded into the ambulance. She'll be taken to local hospital. One of our female officers will go with her and other officers will join her as well at the hospital. When she gets there, uh, she'll be examined by the doctors to see um, what, if anything, she's got inside her. She's saying that she's a couple of months pregnant, uh, which is it's not an unfamiliar thing we see. Pregnant women on occasion do swallow packages of drugs or have drugs inside them as well. Um, and they, they think if they say they're pregnant, it will stop, stop us looking further. She's been vomiting for several hours now. and it, it's, Again, it's not an uncommon reaction. Uh, with people who have swallowed packages. It's just their stomach is having an adverse reaction to anything up to a kilo of foreign packages inside their body. The woman is escorted to hospital by border agency officers who will monitor whether she passes any packages. Across at Gatwick's north terminal, officers are busy processing passengers entering the country. A flight has just arrived from Trinidad and Tobago, and passengers disembarking the flight are being assessed by drugs detection dog Lottie and Officer Claire. Documents are checked at immigration, and passengers are questioned about the purpose of their visit to the UK. One passenger's story in particular has caused concern. A lone female has given a number of suspicious reasons for entering the UK. Right, OK, we're going to go in here now, OK, have a look at your, at your luggage, okay. OK? First of all, I have to ask you if you've got anything to declare to customs. No. Any alcohol, tobacco, no. cigarettes? Nothing like and do you, that. And do you understand it's illegal to bring some things here? Yeah. Like controlled drugs, offensive weapons? Do you understand that? Yeah. Got nothing like that? Nothing like OK. That. The woman told immigration she's planning to visit her fiancé before travelling to France. But alarm bells started ringing when it emerged she had just $60 to fund her entire trip. And is this all of your luggage? Yeah. yeah. Did you pack it all yourself? My mum. Your mum? Yeah, help me. Were you there when she packed it? I was in the bathroom. Um, I was in the bedroom getting ready. Do you fully understand what's in the suitcases? Yes, I yeah? have my OK. Has like anybody in Trinidad given you anything to bring here for them? Um, no. And your friend is meeting you here? 
Yes. Yeah, okay. When did you meet him? I met him last year. Okay. He um, asked me if I would like to come visit. So. The woman seems surprised to have been stopped. And although she's cooperating fully, officers will conduct a thorough check of all of her bags to ensure she's carrying nothing illegal. When did you get the ticket? I got the ticket um, last week. Yeah. Why did you only get the ticket last week? Oh, because he said no cash from me. Oh, he's paid for the trip for you? Yes. Oh, OK. A swab test is conducted on the woman's belongings as the search continues through her cases. And a trace reading for cocaine deepens the intrigue. With nothing else found hidden in the woman's luggage, Officer Kevin wants to conduct an X-ray to see if she's carrying drugs inside her body. What we've got is a body scanner. OK? Yeah, sure. You don't mind going through that? I don't mind at all. No? If we do that, and hopefully you'll be able to get on your holiday. Kevin approaches his superior to get approval for the body scan. Oh, I'm just going to body scan her. Right. She's, um, I've, I've, put, I've run it past her and she's quite happy to do it. Okay. Just to make sure. Yeah, so she's going to do it as a voluntary. Yeah. Thing. In just a few moments, officers will find out if they were right to be suspicious. Back at Gatwick's South Terminal, an investigation is underway into a woman who became seriously ill on a flight from Kingston. After claiming to have swallowed something to bring into the UK, the woman was immediately taken to hospital. In the terminal, team leader Chris goes through the contents of the woman's suitcase. So we had a, a message from the Gatwick Airport. Uh, the airport operator's got like a control room that's manned 24 hours. The message we got was that she'd admitted to swallowing packages. She's now saying that she's not uh, swallowed packages. So it may just be Chinese whispers, but also it needs to be investigated. With nothing suspicious found in her suitcase, an ion track swab test is conducted for any traces of drugs. And that's come up as a, uh, a positive uh, hit for cocaine. It's not saying she has come into contact with cocaine, it's just an indication that she may have. The woman's circumstances are now even more alarming. Chris conducts an X-ray of her suitcase for any hidden concealment. There's nothing in the bags from a customer's point of view, other than the iron track indications, which does give us something else to, to think about. Um, the next step now is to concentrate on the lady. Officers head down to the local hospital to check on the progress of their suspected drug swallower. When someone complains of stomach pains or anything like this, you know, as we said before, the medical uh, assistance is the first priority, and if a medic dictates they go to the hospital, then they, they go to the hospital. Um, from our point of view, we still have a, a, a responsibility, A, towards the patient to make sure there's no harm going to come to them, but B, we've got to safeguard any sort of illicit material they may be carrying. Three UK border agency officers have been monitoring the woman's health at the hospital. When Chris arrives for an update, they're positive she hasn't swallowed any drugs. But nurses have made a shocking discovery. Having spoken briefly to the, the nursing staff, it sounds like she may have been forced by her boyfriend to drink a liquid to, to try uh, and induce a, a miscarriage because she's slightly pregnant. Um, again, it's only a, a vague story we've got. But nevertheless, because she's in our you know, care, she's, she's been detained by us, we'll need to explore that with her. The woman was later discharged from hospital and was of no further interest to the border agency. In the airport's north terminal, the female passenger from Trinidad is about to be body scanned to see if she has any drugs hidden inside her. Okay, what you need to do, you need to stand on here like this, okay, with your hands by your side, all right? And then when the officer says, take a deep breath and hold it, and then this will move and it will go through and then stop. Do you understand? Okay. okay. Have yeah, just go on there like that, yeah. Sorry, right, go very slowly, you won't bang into the wall. Are you ready to go now? Yeah. That's great. Here we go. I can't see any regular uh, shape scanning. To be honest, in the areas we're looking at. No, I don't think so. 
We're happy that she doesn't have anything inside her, um, which is the main reason for using a body scan. There's a possibility that she might have a package inside her bra, which has been known in the past. The definitive thing is to actually do a search, which wasn't done before this um, body scan. So we'll do that, and then we'll find out exactly if there is anything there or if there isn't. The woman is led back to a private interview room where the search will take place. Just take a seat over there. Okay, sure. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen is, okay, because we can't tell what it is, the female officer is going to search you, all right? Okay. okay. But it doesn't take long to find the cause of the abnormality on the scan. You need to get a new brow, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, need, this needs to be bigger. That's what the, what the picture was. See? Yeah, OK. <laughs> That's what the picture shows, you see. Thank you very much again, once again. The cause of the alarm is put yeah. down to the woman's bra. Right, I'm sure you had to go through that, all right? Having completed both customs and immigration checks, she's free to continue her travels. In the following few weeks, Alex and the team at Calais continued their good run of form by discovering a further 34 clandestines bound for the UK.